Okay, in this video I'm doing something new, something I've never done before. We want to convert this AC system to DC. So we're talking about floating the ground. This is a concept I've been working on in my mind for a couple years. I'm trying to just figure it out. I've found a couple resources online that are probably the best resources I've found. GasGasWriter.org, of course, is, was the one that started all this, and the, the guys that post on there are just phenomenally smart. Um, I found a couple other sources that just kind of help explain motorcycle electronics and also how the AC system on a motorcycle works. I'm going to share those with you um, so you can look those up. <clears throat> and uh, the reason I want to do this, convert from AC to DC, is because the AC system is plenty powerful. It's, uh, I forget how many watts this bike puts out stock, but it's plenty to run this um, it's a trail type headlight that's a halogen and it's super super bright we're on both bulbs and it just, just lights up everything so i'm really happy with the lighting but i like to run a fan a uh, cooling fan because we do get pretty hot sometimes in the summer in the canyons in new mexico um, and also i'd like to power my voyager um, directly from the motorcycle rather than just running off the battery so i've fried two of these actually trail tech knows my name um, unfortunately <clears throat> um, because this is the third one they sent me um, the original one that i had um, quit working after a day and I sent it to trail tech and they were like, Oh, uh, your regulator is probably bad on that bike. Why don't you put a new one on before you connect it to power? So I put a new, um, gas, gas regulator on AC regulator and it fried the second one. And so I sent it back to them and they said, okay, we're going to send you a third one, but we're not sending you any more. We're not warranting anymore. Um, until you convert to DC. <clears throat> so I'm converting to DC now, almost two years later. Uh, or a year later, a year and a half later, or something. So, <clears throat> and how do you do that? Um, there's a kit that Trail Tech sells. That's a KTM kit. That's a AC to DC conversion. Has the stator, has the uh, regulator rectifier, has a battery. Okay, this is not a starting battery like for like you'd use for a uh, an electric start bike. This is a kicker, of course. So I don't need a giant battery or a big heavy battery, just enough to keep the electronics going. Um, and that's what that'll do. And so <clears throat> instead of uh, buying their stator, um, I'm just buying their regulator rectifier and their battery, and then I'm going to float the ground on the stock stator here. And how do you do that? So that's the whole purpose of this video is because I could just couldn't wrap my mind around how this works and how I needed to do it. <clears throat> so first, just an understanding of how motorcycle uh, power works for these uh especially for this kickstart bike. Um, the principal, I've forgotten who the guy is, Faraday or somebody, talks about how an, electro, when a, an electromagnet, how an electric or a magnet passing over a bundle of wires can induce an electrical current in the wire. And so that's all we're doing here. Um, the magnets that are inside the stator or this rotor, that's the rotor, um, uh, or a flywheel, right? This goes on the outside right here. And I used when I used to look at these, I used to think this is the thing that turns. This doesn't turn at all. This is the stator. This doesn't turn at all. It's mounted. It's solid. What turns around it is the rotor here or the flywheel, um, but it has magnets inside of it. And so this flips on here, of course, and spins around when the engine spins. And these magnets inside here are, uh, there's a North Pole and a South Pole to each of them. So let's go up in the top here so you can see that it's just kind of holding that up there like that and so that let's just call that a north pole because it's pulling my um, piece of metal toward it and we're going to slide it over and see how it kind of pops over that there's like a place there that it's jumping over that's the south pole so we try to push our piece of metal against it and it repels it and it pushes it to the side so there's a north pole there's a north pole there's a north pole there's a north pole and there's a south pole in between each of these so hopefully that's coming out in the video here South Pole, South Pole, North Pole, South Pole. So um, these alternating magnets here, as this spins, these magnets go over these poles that stick up here. And these coils of wire, um, electrical currents excited by these magnets in each of these coils. So that's what produces AC power. So this rotor stator combination, when the rotor spins over, it produces AC power. Now, there's apparently several different kinds of stators out there some that produce ac power only for the ignition like on a motocrosser that don't doesn't have any um windings here for uh lighting because you don't have lighting on a dirt bike or not needed so on this bike we have um wiring for 
We have coils for lighting and for the ignition. And I don't know which are which, it doesn't matter to me. Um, the important thing I needed to figure out is how to float the ground on this and get the ground off the um, off the stator so that I could use that wire to tie it into the regulator rectifier. And so that's what we're going to get into. So there's an even better, there's a fantastic video. I'm not going to try to reproduce this guy's uh, um, work, but uh, if you just search how AC regulator, I'm sorry, how AC uh, CDI ignition systems work for a motorcycle, the first video that pops up is uh, the guy with a piece of paper and he's explaining basically how the AC system works. And it's basically how this bike works um, on this gas gas. So check that video out, Google it, and um, how AC motorcycle ignition slash CDI systems work. So check that out. I'm, if I can figure out how to put a link at the end of this video, I'll put a link at the end of the video for, for the guy's video because it just it makes perfect sense the way he explains it. And so, so this um, stator has two wires, has uh, three wires, at, if not four wires, I think it's four actually, that come off this. Um, that power the motorcycle's ignition side as well as the lighting side. So the ignition side, so basically it power it does two two different things. It powers the ignition, um, which fires the spark plug, and it also powers the lighting. Those are two separate systems, okay? And they're both AC on this bike. They're both alternating current. They both use alternating current all the way through the CDI, um, through the coil, and then to the spark plug for the ignition side, and then also for the lighting side. Um, that's AC power also goes to the lights and then is grounded back to the frame. So when they say floating the ground, what does that mean exactly? What it means is if you're going to use um, a combined AC and DC system on your bike with a full wave rectifier that you have to have <clears throat> that you can't share the ground. Okay, that's the bottom line, and that's why you have to float the ground here. And what they mean by floating the ground is taking the ground off of the frame, which is attached to the stator body here, or the, the body of the stator, whatever it's called, um, this metal here that's attached to the case, which is attached to the frame. You have to take this ground off and get it off the frame for the DC system. Okay, so the AC system is still going to, the ignition side is still going to share the... Um, ground, or it's still going to have its own ground through the frame, but the DC system that we're going to convert to um, can't touch the frame. So we have to float the ground. So this one of these wires on here, we're going to have to unsolder, if that's a word, and take that wire and then connect it to the regular rectifier and then take all my other grounds off for the lighting. Okay, And so those grounds will all be tied into the battery rather than tied to the frame. And that's the bottom line of floating the ground. So how do we do that? Um, we have to take our grounds off uh, for the headlight and, and the other things. I've got to figure out all those. I don't know about all those yet. But the wiring that we need to float, or the wire that we need to float, is actually this wire right here. And I hope this shows up in the GoPro. Um, this little lug right here is attached to the, um, the stator body here. And this copper wire right back here where the tip of my, not this brown one in the front here, but this copper exposed one right here that's attached to this um, coil is the one we're going to unsolder. And we're going to take that, and this is the light, this has to be a lighting coil right here because it's grounded to the frame here. So we're going to unsolder this and attach, I'm just going to use a bare yellow wire just like this one. I'm just going to use a piece off a roll, 16 gauge, and solder it to that wire not let it touch the frame or the frame or the body of this stator here and then we'll run it behind the stator and up this alongside the other yellow wire which is the other power wire for the lighting so we're going to have two yellow wires coming off where right now there's just one and we'll pull this apart in just a minute and I'll show you where the yellow wire is that comes off this so right now there's a yellow wire and a white wire that both send AC voltage for lighting or accessories um, the yellow wire is the one that's tied into the lighting. I know that because I've jacked with the lighting on the other side of the system here. Um, but, so what I'm going to do is add another yellow wire, and that's going to allow um, the AC system to not touch the ground, 
Those wires are going to be attached to this regulator rectifier from Trail Tech. We're going to attach those my two yellow wires to these two yellow wires so that these two yellow wires coming off up here, I'm going to tie those into the bottom of this regulator rectifier, these yellow wires right here. And the way the regulator rectifier works is the AC power is going to be coming um, directly to this via these two wires. And it doesn't matter which one. They're not... It, the polarity doesn't matter. You can connect either one to either wire down here, so it doesn't matter. Um, but what the regulated rectifier does, it does two things. It not only regulates <clears throat> the DC voltage output, but it rectifies the rectifier part of it actually changes the AC current to DC current. So that's the cool part about this. Um, it'll take this AC current that this stator is making, um, convert it to DC output, a red and a black wire. Okay, and we're going to attach those to the battery here, like that. And then I'll also tee into this red wire, and that's what's going to go up to my existing wiring that goes to the lights. So that'll power the positive side, will power the lights, the tail light, um, my fan, my Voyager, blah, blah, blah. And then the grounding wires will have to float also off the frame and get those off the frame wherever they're attached and attach those to this black wire that'll go back to the battery. Okay, so the bottom line is this is still going to produce AC power. The AC to DC conversion, this, this, doesn't change the fact that this produces AC power, the stator does. So the stator is going to put out AC power up two yellow wires, um, and it's going to come up these two wires to the regulator rectifier. It's going to re rectify the power from AC to DC so that it'll charge a DC battery, a 12 volt battery, and it also power my um, lights and other things. And then it's going to regulate the power also, that's the regulator part of it, so that uh, it's a consistent output. Um, 12 and a half, 13 volts, I forget what it is, what the spec is, but it won't overcharge or undercharge then. That'll be the good part. So that's the rectifier regulator part of it. Okay, so I'm just going to pull this apart here. Trying to make you sick, putting my... Head lamp back on. Okay, so hopefully all that diatribe made some sense. So three bolts here. One, two, three. My plan, my plan originally was to use the Trailtech stator. Um, this is the 2K3 ignition by Kokusan. Kokusan, Kokusan, however you say it. And uh, it's the same one the KTM uses. So I was going to replace theirs... Uh, or mine with theirs, but right now I'm just going to float the ground on this one. I'll replace this one eventually. This is uh, 2007, so that's about, what, eight years old or so. And um, I'll replace it eventually with one of the KTM ones, or maybe one of the other gas gas ones. I guess it doesn't matter. Okay, so off it comes. There's two bolts that hold the stator on. I'll take this off later, this plate off. Um, but here's the wiring that comes off the stator. It goes out the back there and comes up right here. Now two of these wires are for this, uh, I forget what this thing's called, but this basically is for the timing. This tells when this, this uh, when the magnet passes by this piece, um, this is what tells the CDI when to release its energy to the spark plug. So that we're not worried about. So there's four wires here, a little bit dirty there, hopefully it'll show up here. There's the yellow wire. That's the AC wire that I'm going to use for lighting. So this white wire is also an AC wire. I'm not sure where this goes, but we're going to find out. Um, I think on gasfastrider.org, some of the guys are saying this wire just terminates. It doesn't uh, go anywhere, but it's still putting out uh, AC voltage, so it can be tied into use for accessories, I think. So we'll correct that in the future videos if I'm wrong. And then, so that's the yellow wire for AC lighting. This is white wire for whatever. Um, and then these two wires, this black with a red stripe and then it looks like red with a white stripe are the two wires that go to the CDI for the ignition side of the stator. So when the stator produces the ignition um, current that goes up those two wires to the CDI box and then the CDI distributes it um, to the coil and to the uh, spark plug eventually. 
Okay. So, how do you float the ground? <clears throat> Again, we're going to lift this wire right here. We're going to unsolder it, lift it, tie in a wire, um, run it out the back of the stator somehow. I'm going to have to run around the back, make sure it's insulated well, and come out the back. I'm going to run it up uh, alongside this yellow wire in here. I don't know if I'm going to put it on the outside of this and then put a new sheath around this whole thing or try to run it down the sheath, or I don't know how that's going to work. I'll have to figure that out. So the most... The best resource I could find um, as far as how to float the ground from an AC system was on kdxrider.net. And so if you just search kdxrider.net and then float ground, if you just type that in Google, kdxrider.net float ground, the first uh, link that comes up is this right here, this discussion. And this might be the at least the easiest I have found. I'm not going to try to reproduce it or recreate it for you guys. This is, it's written so well. Just look it up. I printed it out here. This guy uh, is trying to convert his KDX to uh, DC power uh, for some different uses. Um, different uses. The guy that responded actually drew some diagrams of how this works. And uh, it's basically a simple electric schematic, but he says, this is how your system is. Start here. This is how your system exists right now. And this is basically how the gas gas system works on this bike. This is the magneto or the stator. Um, has a yellow wire coming off that goes to the power for the light switch for the lights. This little squiggly with the ground right here is the ground that we're going to float. So we're going to take that wire off where it's grounded right there. We're going to cut it right there. And then we're going to connect that um, and then use that and put it in line to the regulator rectifier. But that comes in a minute. So basically he's saying this is how your bike exists right now. And then what you're going to do to float the ground is you're going to take out everything circled in green on this side. So you're going to cut out this, cut out this, and cut out the existing regulator, the existing AC regulator. And then you're going to end up here. And he has a diagram that shows you basically um, just the ignition side of the electrical system. And so when you add the regulator, rectifier, and battery, you're going to put those here, and then here's how you're going to wire it up. Okay, so that leaves the ignition side out of it. It's just floating the ground and connecting that directly to your AC regulator, rect or your uh, regulator, rectifier, and your battery. And then the best diagram of all was this last one that he made, and it shows how <clears throat> he split the ignition system with the lighting system. So their wires aren't all overlaid. And that's what was so confusing to me is just like, oh, I hate tracing wires. But this uh, splits it into two different sections here, the ignition side and the lighting side. Check it out. It's a fantastic uh, read if you're interested in doing this at all. And it helps it make perfect sense. Okay, so the next video, I'm going to start working on uh, how to get all my wiring exposed and then how I'm going to get this floated <clears throat> and... Uh, how I'm going to wrap my wires. That's going to be the next challenge. Okay, see you in a bit.